Hi, this is Kevin Swiger with VPG Micro Measurements, and I'm here today in our UK office, Vichet Measurements Group UK, with Alan Fulbrook. And Alan is going to illustrate the correct procedure recommended by Micro Measurements for installing a CEA series strain gauge on an aluminum substrate using Embon 200 adhesive. Okay, so first stage is to grease the surface. So we're going to use the GC6 isopropyl alcohol. We're just going to give the, the beam a good, good degrease. The second stage is to do a wet abrade braid with the conditioner. In prep, conditioner A. We use, we use a silicon carbide paper because this is aluminium, not aluminium, SCP some carbide paper. So we're going to abrade the beam in a non-preferential direction. Alan, what grit of silicon carbide paper is being used here? This is a 400. That's, that's appropriate for aluminium. Yeah, SCP3 is our fault number. These beams are quite flat, so I just need to abrade through the machining marks to remove any oxidization. And always with our process, drive from center to edge, center to edge. This prevents, uh, you wouldn't want to go back and forth, I guess, because that's going to redistribute the contaminants. Yeah, you don't want to take the contamination from the outside edge back into the centre. Okay, so obviously we need to put the strain gauge somewhere. So I'm going to mark out. Just using a pencil, because it's aluminium. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to scrub with a cotton tip. Using plenty of the conditioner. First clean, I'm just going to remove the graphite. There's no point spreading it around. Sense to edge, sense to edge. And this is an iterative process, so I need to do it a few times. What I would say is make sure you use plenty of solution. Hold the cotton tip right down near the end and use good firm pressure. So the cotton tip does come away slightly grey. Drive from centre to edge, centre to edge, and I'll go back in there just one more time hopefully. And it has that sort of squeaky, clean sound to it. So the cotton tip's now coming away clean. Drive from center to edge, center to edge. Now the M100 won't stick to an acidic surface, so I need to neutralize the surface with our MN5A conditioner. Use plenty of conditioner.
making sure I cover the whole gauge insulation area. Obviously at this stage it should remain clean. There's not another cleaning process. And as always, drive from center to edge, center to edge, not to reintroduce that contamination. Okay, so I've got my beam ready for my gauge. We're gonna be bonding down a CA gauge. So an SDC 13 for aluminum. See, I've got my clean pre gauge ready for bonding, so I need somewhere to put it. Just gonna lightly clean the box. No point taking my nice clean gauge and sticking it on a dirty box. Equally, I'm going to clean my tweezers before I handle my gauge. Handle the gauge by the tab end. Off my box. Shiny, shiny side up, yep. side down. Definitely shiny side up. And then I'm going to use PCT2M gauge handling tape to handle my gauge. Check away the first bit of tape, see there's a chance for it to collect dust. Anchor the gauge down at one end, tape down, and firm it over. Peel it back up at a shallow angle as shallow as possible. Align the gauge with the alignment mark. And firm down to keep the alignment. Right. Peel it back at a shallow angle again. Hold that back. Then I'm going to use the Inbond 200 catalyst on the back of the gauge. You want to use a very small amount of this, typically wipe the, on the inside of the neck 10 times. Using the side of the brush, start at the gauge to tape interface, along the gauge, past the gauge and lift off. Whenever you lift there's always a small little puddle left behind so make sure you get past the gauge before you lift. Depending on humidity, you need to leave that for a minute to two minutes. Um, where I am, it seems to have cured pretty I, quick. I think that's an important point because one, one thing I have seen uh, mistakes made with using them on 200 and catalyst is in some cases, customers have wanted to mix the two liquids, uh, okay. thinking it was a two part. So I think it's, it's a good, good point that you mentioned that because the catalyst is actually a substance that's dry, uh, that's suspended in alcohol, and it, it's not a a two component adhesive, the catalyst just simply speeds up the cure time, the, the reaction that's taking place. Okay. Good, good point. Okay, I now need to take my bond 200. I got my gauze ready for the push through process. I need to apply one drop for tape to gauge interface without touching the surface. I don't want to draw any contamination back up into the bottle. Keeping the tape nice and firm. My folded gauze, wait for the adhesive to reach the full width of the tape. And two fingers, firm pressure, quickly and firmly through. Gauze in the bin and thumb on the gauge. And my thumb hasn't changed color. I'm not trying to kill this strain gauge. I'm just applying a firm pressure and mainly body heat. How long do you hold the thumb pressure? One minute thumb pressure, typically two minutes without thumb pressure. Obviously if it's a cold day or you know, sort of particularly cold surface, you might wanna apply a bit more body heat, maybe hold it a bit longer. So we've had a, a minute of 
thumb pressure and two minutes afterwards I'm going to roll the tape back over itself this adhesive is very good in shear but it's not so good in peel by design so I'm going to roll the tape back over itself I'm going to check adhesive definitely dry pull the tape back and in the bin and that installation is now ready for lead wires okay thank, thank you Alan good good demonstration how to correctly install a string gauge